Thank you very much. I, uh, I was never very good at therapy <laughs> because I can talk, I just can't talk out loud. But uh, I was made to go this year and it was, it was entertaining. <laughs> the, uh, the therapist said, I can see your work is very important to you, but I feel that it's rather isolating. So tell me, what is it like in a Kristen Hirsch show? <laughs> I don't know, I've never been to one. <laughs> she said, well, who do reviewers compare you to? I said, everybody who makes anybody sad. <laughs> Nick Drake, Elliot Smith, Mark Linkus, Kirk Cobain, Big Chestnut. She said, well, what I want you to do is reach out to all of these people and reform your peer group. <laughs> I can't do that. She said, yes, you can. <laughs> no, I can't. They're dead. She said, all of them? <laughs> yeah, we're a fragile group. <laughs> Flooding. It's okay to slip out of your life clothes and let them fall to the floor. I bet it feels cool. I don't know. All I know is how it feels to be left behind here on fuzzy, prickly earth. Lost, lousy, sort of pissed off, essentially bored. I mean like your essence is bored because happy is gone, fun is gone. That metallic glint in your loved one's eye that said something's about to happen is gone. Nothing's about to happen is much less exciting Though I imagine it's soothing to the person who left. No pain is about to happen. I get that. So, like most people, when I pick up my head, I grab me a hammer and fashion memory goggles out of that heavy, weightless, left-behind sensation and start telling myself the stories me and the gone person lived together. These stories are the tools that help me work this fuzzy, prickly planet until I'm allowed to slip out of my life clothes and follow my friends home. Someone 